Yo, what's up, Bulldogs? All right, I have here the uh, the infamous uh, John John Anthony from John Anthony Lifestyle. He's been making some waves <laughs> in the in the space here uh, as he's Talking been a lot uh, of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought it'd be cool to have uh, John on. We actually uh, ran into each other uh, at a nightclub in in Vegas one time, and you know, I mean, uh, I I saw I saw him in action. I saw that he's he's legit. He's got solid game. You know, I've been watching his videos, and you know, even though I, I'm not really uh, a person that that makes kind of you know the uh the attacking videos uh that doesn't matter what what i what i care about is you know what what can we learn and you know and, and john's definitely got a lot of experience and you know a, a pretty legit i think you know i put it in the title here over uh 1300 lay count uh you know if the guy has that much uh, success you gotta you gotta say well he's doing something right so um so anyway welcome john glad to have you here man Thanks. Yeah. And for those, like that number sounds like so out of control to a lot of people. It's all relative, right? Like, like when I was at like three girls in college, there was a girl that I really liked that I found out she had been with nine dudes and I, that like bothered me for months. It's like, how do you sleep with nine people? And I remember I found out about a dude that was like 27 girls. And I thought he was like the ultimate master. But now, now a thousand doesn't seem like that much. So it's all, it's all like fucking skewed, but I kept exact track guys. Like, how do you, how do you keep track? I, it, I have like a bunch of groups with other advanced friends where I just, I send like an update every single time I get a close. And it's, it's like in my head, I just tracking one of the only objective metrics for, you know, your results in, in the game. So that's why a lot of guys refer to me as like, Oh, the late count guys. I always ask other coaches to kind of measure up how far they've, they've come along in the game. You know, you take in a, into account different factors like their age and how long they were in relationships and this and that, but it's still a pretty good objective metric for skill. Um, yeah, when, when you ran to me in Vegas, I don't I don't remember the exact. So what what did you see? I don't remember the exact story. Yeah, yeah I was I was coaching a, a, a client of mine, and uh, and you, uh, I was we were in the set, and you a mogged. <laughs> so I was like, who's this guy just standing right in front of me? I'm like, what? And I'm like, shit. I'm thinking for a second. I'm like, is this like a bigger brother of you know? Because you're a tall guy too. I, I think we're both yeah. around the same six three, right? You're, or maybe you're I'm six, six four. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got an inch on me, and so I'm like, let's see. So I'm thinking this must be like a brother or something, like for a guy to just walk into, you know, because not too many guys come up to me, you know, being six three, and uh, and then yeah, and then and then we start talking. You know, you're like, oh yeah, you had I think a coaching client there too, and I was like, all right, yeah. well let let's see what what happens, and uh, yeah, you know, it was it was, it was in, I mean, you know, obviously I saw you opening up sets, having success, and, uh, and you know. And practicing good games so uh that right. was uh yeah yeah that was uh, is, is interesting but um but yeah no it's it's, it's funny so cool oh uh, let's see so, we got actually we had someone that was like let's imagine if he kept track of all the girls in the spreadsheet but then he did <laughs> i did right? I, I, it's, it kind of sucks because in, in college so like yeah i, I was the, i started off slow like i always show this graph it was, it's like an exponential graph yeah um i don't know if we should screen share it. Should I show it real quick to people that aren't familiar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go for right, it. Let me, I'll, I'll screen share here. Okay. Um, basically, like in college, I, I used to track like every hookup, like including non sex. And I had a girlfriend that found it. And I, I was only at 17 girls when she found it. And I had oh, like all, cool. all non sex hookups, but she like freaked out. And then I, after that, I only tracked closes. So like, I, I really yeah. wish I would have tracked. But basically, like, like if I ever like, Pulled like a nine and got a got a blowjob and no close. It didn't even count. It's like it didn't even happen. So I, I just tracked the amount of closes. But let me pull up this this uh, graph real quick. Can you guys see this? Let me see. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that so it took me like ten years to hit the first hundred girls. That was about hundred girls a year for a while. My best year was two forty six closes in a year. This is this wasn't updated since October twenty nineteen. It's currently at one thousand three nineteen, but uh, the, the big improvement here, this was kind of the foundation of my system. I was putting this in this forum called Top Beasts in 2012, around the time that I hit 100 girls. And it was supposed to be the, the top 30 best pickup artists in the world. And I just kind of like vacuumed up all the information of what everyone was doing and did like a massive comparative analysis and took all the common overlapping key areas, which is a pretty nerdy explanation. But I came from a, a pretty nerdy background with um, studying philosophy, computer science, all that stuff. I used to play pro poker, compete in chess tournaments, and I used to work on nuclear missile defense for Lockheed Martin for five years out of college. So I'm just very good at optimizing systems. So I brought all that to the table and just treated game like a skill game. And um, the, the big improvement I made that year that I did 246 was setting a lot of dates straight to the house and honing on the texting, but it was just one massive evolution and optimization process. So yeah, I just wanted to show that real quick, but 
Yeah. That, so, so um, it, it was just, you know, over the years it was, it was, who can I find that's better than me in any area of the game and then kind of split test. And if it, if it performs better, just optimize or adapt the system accordingly. Whereas someone like mystery, who I really respect, I feel like he just built a system and then it like froze in time and he hasn't mm -hmm. adapted it or, or evolved it at all. So, um, you know, he, he could have gotten a lot further along. He, he claims we used to talk a bunch like two years ago. He claims that he was in like the low 300 count. Again, it's not all about racking numbers or whatever. That's, that's still very good, but I think he could have done a lot better had he evolved and optimized the system. So, yeah, you know. no. And that's, that's one of the things that, you know, that I really appreciate about you and why I want to really have you on the channel too, is because you are, are using a system, right? A system is going to yep. you, you know, better results than any other thing. You know, I was talking with, with some guys and they're like, ah, you, know, you know, obviously guys talk shit about you because you talk shit about guys. And I'm like, look, yep. I'm like, it doesn't matter what you think about him. Like he's doing, like he's implementing a system that works and that's how he's getting those results. And so you can be like, oh, I don't like the guy. Or you, or you can be like, hey, I can learn something from that and like guys that are able to execute systems in business in um you know in game those are the guys yeah. that are going to be most successful overall uh, it, it's kind of interesting a few people are like you know like oh it's not really something to brag about he's a sociopath and and i'll kind of like <laughs> 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 i see where these guys are coming from Truth but facts. you guys have to you have to understand this you know and, and again you know correct me john if i if i'm painting you in the wrong picture but but this is john's life this is what he does like he wants to be the best in the world well, at this yeah. and it's not like and for an average guy if you're just like an average dude and you're not a dating coach and you're you know you have a lake out of 1300 then that's that's a you know it's questionable what you're doing with this with your life but this is what what john does like and he wants to be the best uh, you know again like i said if i'm paying you the wrong way let me know but but that's no, my, my take on it kind of, kind of the way the best way to explain this is like i like a lot of the best guys i know they had like a pretty like traumatic tra childhood right so i went through the whole fucking terrible verbal my parents are really nice people but my mother like couldn't handle the stress of you know having kids and i was like rebellious and all this shit. so it was like an incredibly verbally abusive childhood that i think created this big drive and ignition component to mm -hmm. get you know external validation from women if i'm being completely honest and then i, I was also given like this genetic ability to the hyper analyze like like mm -hmm. i mastered chess very fast i mastered poker very fast i always I, I was beating like the asian kid you know not to sound racist i was beating like the asian kids in math league which was like unheard of I, I dominated in starcraft against some of the top players in, in the world so any skill game that i've i've entered into i very quickly like figured out like what's the optimal system and then how can i build on that from there and so it was that combination of that verbal abuse plus like a, a massive hyper analytical ability that allowed me to to take this to the extent and, you know I, I i'm into martial arts and stuff as well i do muay thai and and brazilian jiu-jitsu and a lot of the the best martial artists that i follow like georgia st pierre he, he was bullied incessantly as a child mm -hmm. and then yeah. that created the drive to become like the best fighter in the world. So I kind of look at it that way that if I hadn't had such a traumatic childhood, I wouldn't have given so much of a shit to like take this to the extreme that I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, people are making fun of that or whatever. I, I, I'm kind of happy for the childhood experience I went through because it allowed me to like surpass all that. I came from <clears throat> an extreme like introverted place with yep. like massive social anxiety, panic attacks. I was like one of the shyest kids out of like 700 people in high school. And then I, I kind of went to the other extreme and, and figured this out. And now <clears throat> kind of like, like a current update, like I'm living in Brazil in a two-story penthouse you know, on a tropical island. There's like 42 beaches on the island. I live with three hot chicks. The, the main girl I'm dating that I bring on my channel, we have like nine different girls on threesome rotation. And I've got about 15 girls on my own rotation just for one-on-one -on -one plus on-demand threesomes and foursomes with the girls in the house who kind of like living like the Hugh Hefner type lifestyle. And um, also it's not just all about maximizing the lay count, even though the number is so high, I've had like seven long-term girlfriends or monogamous where, you know, for the you know, monogamous in quotes, where, where it's slowed down the, you know, the close rate. And I, I very frequently prioritize the rotation girls over new sexual, like, the, like it's slowed way down, especially lately because there's, there's on-demand stuff in the house. Plus we have, right regulars over and all that stuff so it's not like increasing the the count so to speak but you know this this was kind of like the end point i always wanted to have like a live-in set of hot girls and, and my girl does pick up with me and she's even like getting numbers on her own when, when i'm not with her now so it's it's kind of like this is this is the spot that i wanted to be in and um i've optimized you know my fitness and business stuff <clears throat> in the past couple of years since i quit drinking and stuff like that as well so you know, I'm happy with where I am and I'm trying to bring a, um, a lot of truth to the industry in the sense that 
99% of the industry, I think in the dating community, the red pill community, in pretty much any industry, fitness, it's a lot of charlatans, a lot of internet marketers, a lot of guys bullshitting and um, talking a big talk, but not backing it up with real results. So that, that, that video I put out about all these coaches, wives and girlfriends, yeah, it was kind of a dick move, but don't be claiming to be a guru when you're, when you're selling down with average or below average girls, you know? So um, that's kind of where I stand on that. Yeah, no. And I, and I appreciate that. Like, like I said, I mean, it, it's kind of, it, it's weird. Like some of the guys that, that obviously you've made videos about, I consider to be friends, but at the same time, I can't say, Oh, well, don't call out people. If you see things that, you know, like there's, there's a, a need for, for that to keep things honest or for people to evaluate for themselves. Right. It's like, okay, well look at this and, and see what you think about this. Again, this is kind of the thing that I'm doing with this channel too, is I'm saying, Hey, look, okay. You, you can dislike whoever you want. I'm not getting involved in any kind of feuds between people. I'm just bringing people on my channel and, and you can hear what they have to say. And, you know, and, yeah. and, and from there you can make your own decision because when, that, yeah. And when, and when a guy's legit, like, you know, I would never talk shit on you. I would never talk shit on like Alex from playing with fire. Like, like when a guy's putting out real value, backing up stuff that he's doing, he's not caught faking results. Not caught. It's like, if you don't want to, if you don't want to get called out, don't do fucking bullshit stuff. Right. Don't lie about your results. Don't fake infields. You know, don't have an average or below average girlfriend and claim to be the master. If you do that stuff or, or copy my products, like a couple of your friends did, I'm going to, I'm going to call them out. Why wouldn't I, you know? So, and, and I don't think most of the people in this industry have balls to, to whenever I'm on like a group setting, like with other dating coaches and I'm, they'll, they'll all beat around the bush. Yeah. Other coaches like to mislead you and you know, they don't, they are afraid to say the name. They're afraid mm -hmm. to, make a direct attack. Maybe my style is just to be very direct and, and kind of cutthroat about it. Cause there's no, there's no reason to beat around the bush when they, when these guys are massively scamming and misleading people, but that's just me. So. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, that, that's something that I think we, we definitely have different, different styles on, but, mm -hmm. um, but that's fine. Like I, I, I can, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't discredit the, the, And this is the important thing. I think, you know, that, that I think message that the guys need to hear, which it doesn't discredit, what you're doing and what your results are right and oh, some yeah. people want to say like oh i don't like the guy so then he must be full of shit and it's like no you look at what is the person doing and what their results are and then and then that's what you determine whether their information is is valid or correct yeah. right so, yeah and i'm I'm pretty down to earth like like the the image i portray on on a lot of the videos is like completely different and it's not not to say that i'm like putting on an alter ego or anything but it, um, I'm like super chill and like laid back in person when I, when I get on like a coaching call with a guy that's interested in my courses or when I meet a guy in person, they're like, Oh, you're like the, the chillest dude ever. Like I thought you were going to be some big asshole. <laughs> I'm only, I'm only like, you know, running my mouth and, and talking like an asshole when, when I'm like fucking all like worked up about a guy that's, that's totally out of control and stuff like that. Um, people are saying sociopath not i mean a lot, a lot of the best guys in the game they have they have kind of like the dark triad traits if we're being yeah, fair it's true you know, like it, narcissism machiavellianism um you know a bunch of those things actually work work in your favor to optimize the game and i i tell my clients i try not to you know it's not about it's not about like lying to girls and stuff like that but there's like certain things that can give you advantage in certain situations that I say, like, take this with a grain of salt. Like, it, do, should I tell all my rotation girls about each other? To be honest, most of them are not going to like that and mm -hmm. are going to either drop you or start getting like very jealous and controlling, or they're going to make you use condoms, you know, other things like this. <laughs> but I tell guys, you know, it's up to you. you. You can go the straight honest approach and you just have to accept a big disadvantage that's going to come along with it. Um, <laughs> The comments are funny here, but yeah, we can, we can jump into some valuable stuff. I, I, I had yeah, tuned into your, to your live stream. I know you have questions for me, but one thing I was curious to ask you about mm. your live stream with Alex and playing with fire. You said that you like that video I have about how to not, how to not be a pussy. And there's kind of like that pussy litmus test where you can size a guy up in about half a second and determine if he's a pussy or not. And I played that game with yeah. hot girls in public where it's like that guy, that guy. And it's, we agree like 99% of the time. And a lot of times you don't, you haven't even heard them open their mouth. They're just the way right. they can themselves and this and that. And I think you were trying to distill it on Alex's channel. Kind of maybe the, the there's a lot of things that go into it. Maybe like the determining factor, I think that you pointed out to be is that a guy is like comfortable in his own skin mm -hmm. and kind of like unapologetic in, in terms of like, he's not trying to, to be a people pleaser. He's not trying to be like the cool guy or the smart guy or the funny guy or anything like that, or the impressive guy. He's just like saying whatever he wants to say. And then, you know, that's, he's putting himself out there that way. And I think women can 
appreciate that as well. But I, I kind of wanted to talk more about what, if you, if you could go into your thoughts on that, because that's, I tell yeah. guys, that's like the, that's the common denominator. That's at the top of the, of the tree. If you don't have that handled, a lot of like game techniques aren't going to help you until you, until you kind of solve that problem. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's really key. That's uh, you know, in fact, a lot of what, what I try to do with bulldog mindset is to bring guys from that one end of being the the pussy to the, to being a man to stint because, and, and, you know, a lot of people make fun of that. They're like, Oh, you're going to teach guys how to be a man. I'm like, yeah, because you don't know how, like it, it's not something that you just, and like you said, even with your background, I'd have a sim, I have a very similar background to your background. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. I was very shy, very introverted. I almost went professional poker did kind of for a while was uh oh, really? I, didn't, I didn't know that That's diamond tears in starcraft and uh yes. so you, <laughs> all so that you have the big, the big analytical component as well yeah i was a software developer so yeah i was but, a computer programmer yeah yeah but um but but yeah so you know but going from that like i see the transition in myself right and it's it's so i mean even just looking at my older videos right even just on this channel like the early videos i have this high pitched voice i'm uncomfortable with myself and you could assess me if you watch one of my older videos you're like that guy's a pussy right but yeah. you know you look at the yeah, later same, videos same, same with yeah. me it's, i i watch yeah, in the early days and and you kind of get more used to speaking in front of a camera too right like yeah I yeah used to, i used to be terrified in front of the camera in the early days but yeah, it makes it makes a huge difference, and, and I think you're right to point out that that is is such an element that matters so much more than even a lot of the the game techniques that coaches learn be, or teach. Because if you don't have that, it's it's you're going to be incongruent. People are going to look at you and they're like, "Yeah, I, <laughs> I know, it's yeah. going to feel like creepy or weird." Whereas you know, but and that's a hard thing to to get to the point where you're comfortable with yourself in your own mm -hmm. skin. But, uh, yep. but yeah, but everyone sees it. it it's instant. In fact, it, it's so the, the most apparent, I was just at the airport coming back from Tampa and I was, I was sitting there. Uh, I forget what I was doing, but I, I just, out of the corner of my eye, I saw those, like this group of, of people uh, coming up to like the, the counter. Actually, no, I was at, it was, sorry, it wasn't at the airport. It was, at, I was playing poker at Hard Rock actually in, in Tampa. And I saw this group of people coming up to the bar and just out of the corner of my eye, I saw this one guy and within a split second, I was like, that guy's gay. Right. You know, not mm -hmm. no offense to the guy, but I was like, that guy has to be gay. Like, I just like it wasn't what he was wearing. It was just just one split second of the way that he was standing. And I knew he was gay. And then it was confirmed within, you know, a, a couple of minutes later of, of watching his interaction. And it's like it, it, that's how, you know, if, if I can pick up on that out of the corner of my eye while I'm focused playing poker, then every girl in the room, as soon as you walk into a bar or nightclub, she knows already that you're that you're yep. supposed to be not like that's it yep yeah and i i tell guys like it, you know you know there's there's been a lot of discussion about about this from other you know other guys that uh sunny who, who i used to be friends with sunny arvado he wrote like a whole book about this but the whole like as the generations go on men are becoming less manly mm -hmm. and like, we don't have to you know we didn't have any wars to fight in like these generations in the recent years we didn't have any wars to fight in where a lot of us aren't working with our hands you know, we're not having to, to to do long hours of hard work. A lot of guys are just becoming like more and more and more feminine, and and the women are becoming more masculine, especially right. in the West, in the Western cultures. So you have like that divide, kind of, and it's almost going the other direction where the you know the women are are kind of like wearing the pants. And I'm not saying like there's there there should be this or that formal role, but a lot of the traditional roles have kind of like flip flopped, and um and and a lot of these guys are like. It's it's kind of it's kind of like they're they're hopeless until they uh, you know that's you're doing a good service like I'm providing the game techniques, but at the end of the day the girl's not going to respect, you know like like I just I had a party the other day and there was this like really nice guy, it was a couple months ago so I think my chick's watching it wasn't that recent, uh, there was a there was a dude that was just like super nice and everyone's like oh he's such a nice guy and he liked this one hot girl at the party. And they're all like, "Oh, we should set them up," and like they'd be perfect. He's so nice, and this and that. But he's he's the kind of he's the kind of guy that everybody looks at as like a teddy bear or whatever. Not not mm -hmm. that they want to bang. And then I ended up banging that chick, you know, like like a few days later. And the guy found out he was like devastated. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't even really paying much attention to her. But you know, there's key things to do to say how you carry yourself. Like she was like staring at me a lot of the party, and this and that, you know. But God, but I used to be that dude, and, it, and it's kind of like you're on the sidelines, and they can't figure out what they're doing wrong. And I, and I remember I used to have the mindset that there was like a linear correlation to how much nice stuff you did for a girl and how much she would like you. So I was like, all right, I'm going to buy chocolates. I'm going to buy flowers, 
take her to dinner. Okay, if she's upset with me and I don't deserve it, that's fine because I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want any conflict because I could lose her. But all these things actually work against you. It's exactly. it's like counterintuitive and paradoxical. And, and the whole like Disney narrative and what your fucking mom tells you and all this shit growing up, it's it's all in reverse. What you see in the movies, you know, so so the guy just wants to like go for that, like kiss goodnight at the end of the, you know, it's, it's, it's a fucking disaster. So yeah. I was going to say about that, you know, I, I think also those, a lot of guys in the red pill type of community get it too wrong the other way. So they're like, Oh, never show a girl any kind of validation, never mm -hmm. compliment or never get her anything. And I'm yep. sure like with the girl that, that you're with, you probably treat her uh, like a princess. You probably treat her really well. Took I do. Care yeah. of her. Right. And, and she knows that, that until, that, until yeah. she fucks up, like that's the right. big key caveat. Exactly. Like, yeah. And it, it doesn't mean be trigger happy that when I teach these videos on boundaries and stuff, I, guys start misapplying it and they get very trigger happy with it. Yeah. And they, and they try to like boundary me in, in, in like the, just the, this totally out of context situations. Like they're just so excited to boundary someone or exercise authority, yeah. but it's, but it's misapplied. It's the same thing when I tell them like, here's how you, you sexualize things. Then they're like, all right, I can't wait to use the sexualization line. They do it out of context and it's not congruent with with the frame they're putting out and stuff like that. And it these so that's the important other thing. It's it's you have to actually internalize these things. It has to be part of who you are. It's not just special magic lines to sexualize or boundary people. So yeah, but but in terms of what you said there, with, like with my girl, like my my uncle who was like one of the biggest like natural players I ever met. He said, treat them well until they fuck up, and then. Mm -hmm like make it clear that he's like differentiate yourself from other guys tell them i'm not i'm not some punk that puts up with bullshit like that and be willing to drop them even if they're a 10 he's like he's like they use their their pussy yep. so to speak as like a talisman to hypnotize you right and he's like if you're immune to that you stand out and that he's like he, he told me all these like glory stories of like you know shutting down like these perfect looking girls and they and they come back he's like, like I'll, I'll just tell one of the stories in a quick abbreviated version you can get to the some of the questions, but, but he said there was this chick who was like the hottest girl that he had seen, like in his town. He, he claims it was like to date still the hottest girl. I don't know if that's glorification or whatever, but he said the chick was, he ended up dating her. He was like in a metal band. He had like long hair. He, he was like practicing Kung Fu and he would like get in fights in high school. He was like the cool dude. He would bring like, um, like stereo hooked up to a car battery back in the eighties and shit to the beach. And the girls would come over and they'd make drinks and all this shit. But he started dating this girl. And she pulled some kind of bullshit. And he always said, like, if it feels like bullshit or there's something shady, like, don't put up with it. Doesn't matter what shape or size. And don't engage them in an argument about it either, because you're always going to lose. Exactly. So, so he kind of like, you know, just kind of like was avoiding her, did his own thing. And there's no cell phones yet this time. She comes to his fucking house wearing this like tiny outfit. He's like washing his motorcycle. And she's like coming up the driveway and she's like, she's like, why, you know, why are you returning me call my calls and this and that? He's like, oh, I've been busy. And she's like, well, I don't like this and that. And he's like, listen, he's like, I enjoyed hanging out with you, but you know, I'm not some punk that puts up with this kind of shit. He's like, I don't like what you did. And I, and I don't want to fucking deal with that. And she's like, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. Like, well, fuck you then. He's like, all right, well, he's like, that's fine. And he just, he just kind of ignored it. She, she walks off and um, he said, she's walking down the street and he sees like her fucking ass falling out of her skirt or whatever and he's like oh fuck and he like almost had a moment of weakness yeah. like every every bone in his body was like just fucking bring the girl back like just bang her but he just let her go and she gets like down the road and she stops and she and she comes back and she's like i'm so sorry i'll never do this shit again he's like i fucking bang the shit around the motorcycle i'm like oh what happened after all that he's like oh, i banged her for like two more months got bored of bored of her and broke up with her he's like ah oh. you know but that that's the kind of like real legendary player shit yeah, and it's not it's not just like oh like you know do this do this to be like some cool guy or whatever like he was genuinely willing to he told me like even if he was at a chick's house and she fucked up like he'd refuse to bang her and shit like that even if he was horny he would like go and jerk off in the bathroom you know shit like that but just having like that strong mindset of like not letting chicks fucking walk all over you and and they appreciate that and no and almost no dude is willing to you know draw that line in the sand with them so absolutely yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I I like to look at it as the difference between being like be kind, but don't be nice, right? Like yeah. nice is when you're you're wanting something from someone else, like you're 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 seeking the validation or whatever it is, like you're doing something in order to get something, even if it's just approval. It might not be sex; yeah. it might just be approval. But being kind, being a kind person, is like, hey, I just do this. I just treat people well. 
you know, but, but at the same time, it's like, well, if you don't treat me well, then I'm not going to, then I'm not going to deal with it. And, and I like that. I mean, you know, what that story you just talked about is, is perfect frame control, right? It's like, all right, yep. my frame is like, Hey, I don't accept this kind of behavior and you can, you can leave as opposed to getting into so many guys get into arguments. They get into arguments with girls. They're like trying to convince them. And it's like, nah, you know, I say my piece. And then if you have a problem with that, I don't care. I'm like, I don't have time for this. I got other shit yep. I need to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to engage you. But that, but that's, there's a clear difference between like what we're talking about here. And then what, mm -hmm. what a lot of the red pill guys perverted into where right. they go, the other, they go the other extreme. I was just talking to a, a prospective client this morning and he, and he said he went way down the red pill rabbit hole. And he said at first it was kind of helpful to get some of the mindsets, right. But then he started resenting women mm -hmm. and like, everything is all about like, don't let them, get validation don't let right. them turn you, you know, don't let them punk you and it just becomes like the same problem that you had originally but now you're on the other extreme 100%. And, he, and he and he said like none of these coaches are giving strategies how to get the girls it's just all like mindset 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 about you know like how to be the, the most alpha and, and at the end of the day like most of those guys aren't getting laid so yeah that's it, that's a big problem well and i think you know the biggest thing again like i said i've got a lot of friends in the in the red pill community so but but i talk about ideas you know and and, and i think a lot of the ideas that are wrong there is and i and i've pointed this out multiple times is that what happened to the the seducers right like guy, guys who are truly you know i don't even really like the term alpha male but uh they should be seducers. Where's the Don Juans and you know the the Lord Byron, you know the the type of guys that are actually real womanizers, not not yeah. hate. Like it's so hard, I think, for a guy to be good at picking up girls when he hates them. You know, yeah. it's like it's going to it's going to your what you feel inside is going to is going to be perceived by there, other there's people. No and there's no reason to to do anything. Right. And a lot of, a lot of it is just like coping and, and dealing with cognitive dissonance. Where where I've seen a lot of these guys that can't get hot girls just just lump them onto a category of like all being bitches or all being too high maintenance. And that that was like the common defense when I put out all those uh, dating coaches, girlfriends, and wives. Everyone said, well, no one actually wants to settle down with a hot girl because hot girls aren't worth the time. You can't build anything with a hot girl. They're too busy maintaining their appearance, which is just all BS. You know, once you've dated a bunch of hot girls, they're just like every other girl, except, you know, that most people don't have access to them because they're not, you know, they don't have the right amount of value and, and shit they can bring to the table and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, there's no need to to say, to, to be like resentful against hot girls and like try to like even the score and right. all this shit exactly yeah yeah that's just the wrong way to to, to live and it, it's still to a large degree seeking that external validation yeah. now now what do you say to guys right because i think a lot of guys that are watching this are like wow 1300 lay count you know because i put it in the title and they're like well i don't want to be like that i don't want to like i don't need to bang all these girls i just want a girlfriend i just want to get one girlfriend because i get this all the time from guys and yeah. i you know i try to correct their mindset to to a degree what's your you know, because because I know that they can't get one girlfriend unless they have the capability to get yeah. multiple girls. That's what, that's the paradox. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've been coaching this stuff about ten years now. I've coached thousands yeah. of guys around the world, and I didn't set out to just like bang lots of girls. That's that's like the result of having a good skill in the game. Like I said, I I normally prioritize rotation. I normally run big rotations, but when you're good at this, it just becomes systematic. Um, but I get a lot of clients that come to me and they say like, oh, I just want a full package girlfriend, right? I just want a nine or nine five girlfriend that checks a lot of boxes. Okay, have you ever been to an eight before? No. Have you ever been to seven before? Uh, not really. Okay, have you ever been to six before? Uh, not really. You know, so it's, it, you can't go yeah. from getting average girls or having very minimal results to getting a full package stunner girl. Like there's an evolution process that happens. So, so what I normally see is there's like a leveling up in the guy's confidence, in the guy's charisma. And usually when he, you know, and it's not like the girl's only value is her looks, but but that's like usually the the metric I see for as they're kind of upgrading in their in their quality, they start to fuck it up as they level up. Mm -hmm. Like because you can't be icy cool. I always say this, you can't be like icy cool the first time you're on dates with with eights or the first time you're on dates with yeah. nines or eight fives. You're scared. I, I remember the first time I was around like a nine or a ten, like on an actual date or a, a potential sexual situation, I was like terrified. Right. And, and you just co you just totally go off script naturally because of what you know of what you normally know that works because you're like oh I have to play this one different because she's really hot so like now I care more what I say I care more what she's thinking I care more about how I'm doing 
And so now, and plus like, you're just like terrified that you're gonna have to go back to the, the quality from before if you fuck this up because it's like your first chance at it or, or you have limited options of girls of that caliber. So until you like acclimate, so to speak, which I, I help them shortcut that process as much as possible, but it's a natural process you have to go through. So normally for a guy to get like a full package girlfriend, he has to go through this leveling up process. And it's, it's normally like 50 to 100 girls. If I had to put a number on it, it's, yeah. it's once, once they're kind of in that range, they've been through enough social situations. They've been through enough like personalities that they can properly calibrate. Because when you're when you're with the really hot ones and, you know, the best analogy is you're, it's like a, you're walking a tightrope sometimes where just like one wrong move. Like the girl I'm with in Brazil right now, she said that she normally only sees guys for a second date like 5% of the time. And she's a pretty hot girl and she's an engineer. She's like a full package girl. And she also waits like five dates normally to sleep with a guy, which is definitely, she thought that was normal, but it's definitely not normal as, as you and I know. Right. A lot of girls will, will close on the first or second date unless you're in Ukraine. But, uh, you know, so guys, you know, it's, it's very easy for guys to make a mistake where like they say something dumb, they do something dumb. Like she said it was down, it was down to between me and one other dude that was a super cool dude, but he was like rude to the the waiter when they were on their date or whatever. And that like shut him down. So, and, and he had like first priority cause she went out with him first, you know, so it, you know, just like these little mistakes like that. But if you don't have any dating experience and you're not used to being around hot girls, you're just going to be intimidated naturally. And you're going to be, you know, just inexperienced. So to all you guys out there that are like, Oh, I don't want to bang tons of girls. That's fine but you kind of have to go through this process. I don't know any guys that at a beginner level just start smashing out stunners, right? Yeah. Or that, that just start getting all the, all the best quality girls. You have to go through that process, you know, for better or worse. And so that's, that's what I see. Like most of my testimonials, oh, I went and a lot of them get that 50 to hundred girls in their first year. And then they, they run into like a girl that checks most of the boxes and they're able to keep her around. And then, you know, the, 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 but then what else is interesting is like a, from a philosophical aspect is like now they have this hot girl, but they're good with hot girls and mm -hmm. they end up like cheating or they end up like not happy being locked down because they have this skill now where they can get other hot girls. I mean, me and my other advanced friends, we joke around that like girls want like that alpha, like player bad boy, but they can't handle what that entails where right, like exactly, yeah. other, other hot girls want us or like we have other options. It's hard to just be like fully committed. And that doesn't mean we don't love the girl or we don't, you know, we don't want to be a good guy. It's just that, you, you've kind of like created a monster now where it's like, it's hard to just like flip the switch off, so to speak, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's some really good insights in there, especially I, I think just the, even, even in, you know, the, the guys that, that want to get into their relationship and they don't have the experience because they can't handle, like they don't have the ability, like just like that story you're talking about, uh, was it, I think your uncle, you said yeah. where he was able to just walk away. And so if you can't walk away, then you're not going to have any kind of, Oh yeah, you get walked on, and it, so like yeah. you can only walk away if you have you know there's more out there, <laughs> and and so yeah. you know that's I think that's so so critical is that a lot of guys don't understand that. Like, in in the earlier it, days, well, I used to let hot girls get away with a lot more. I don't know, yeah, probably the same for you. I don't know, but like when when you first started getting that taste of of the hot girls, I it was hard to you know like crack down or like cut them off when they fucked up. I I used to permit a lot more stuff earlier back in the days, but at this point. You know, we, we had a, a foursome situation where one of the girls was like being rude to, to one of the other ones. We just, you know, we just said like, sorry, like you got to leave. She's like, oh, nobody's ever like, you know, told me like I'm not welcome. Like, do you see that? Like, she was like really nice yeah. body, all this shit. We're like, you know, that's fine. When you have a bunch of other ones like that, you don't need, you know, or I, ha I had a situation like a couple weeks ago. There was like a full package 10 that was acting like just very huge shit attitude. And I said, you know what? I don't, we had a date plan. I was like, I don't even fucking want to meet you. Your attitude's trash. And she's like, oh, well, you know, no one's ever said that. And I'm like, yeah, nobody wants to fucking tell you how it is, but your attitude's really shitty. And it's, you don't, you don't need, you don't need that kind of shit. Like if you have a bunch of hot girls already, you don't need to deal with all the, all the baggage and bullshit. A girl that has a shitty attitude is going to bring into your life, you know? So, but back in the day, I would, I would have, I would have dealt with that just because yeah. you, you don't know what's going to come around again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to have the options in order to exercise. So, you know, it, options, uh, choice without options is not a choice at all. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got uh, the lowest. He says, John <laughs> Anthony, what do you think of Corey? Wait, start <laughs> trying to make us talk shit on the channel. All right. All right. This, well, this you know, guy, yeah, I have no problem talking shit. 
Uh, yeah. I don't know how much, you know, how, how off the rails we want this to get. I mean, you can that dude, give you I mean, basically, yeah. that dude, just watch any of his videos for five seconds and you can tell he's not banging out chicks. So that's, that's all right. I like to make the joke. He has a book called 3% Man. And, it, uh -huh. and to me, that's very fitting because he, he seems to be like 3% of a man, in my opinion, <laughs> just the way he carries himself. So that's all I'll say about him. I'm going to, I'm going to go into more, you know, guys don't like the ad hominem attacks, but a lot of it's relevant though. Like we, we talked about with, with being a yeah. pussy, like, I don't. I don't. I don't want to make you talk shit, but what? What is your honest opinion of that guy? Are you familiar with with his content or of Corey? Yeah, my my honest opinion of him, you know, again, not to not to talk shit, is that I I thought his book was good. I thought it was solid principles, but when I see, see the guy, I can't imagine that he's actually doing the things that he says he's doing just his persona doesn't seem congruent you know we talked about the pussy test again i'm yeah. sure he's a, he's a, a you know a decent guy and he, he's you know he, he's you know obviously not teaching complete dog shit type of advice but at the same time it just doesn't seem congruent with me i could be wrong but that's how i how i see yeah it. that's that's so, my point too yeah uh, okay. let's see we got super chat from coach white pill he says john how much of your game do you attribute to your height uh do you think you have uh, 1300 lay count if you're five, six, that's a really good question. So, yeah. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm not one of those coaches that say looks don't matter. Height isn't a factor. Any of these things like uh, all that stuff obviously can be advantage. Um, that being said, I have a lot of friends that are five, eight, five, nine range that are in the 300 to 500 lay count range. So it's still possible to do well. You're just going to be, you're not going to have access to as many women, like all the girls right. that that won't date you when they're when you're like short of them in heels it, but there's still plenty of other girls like that's the thing is like you know we're not we're not in tribes anymore we're not unless you're in like a tiny city it doesn't fucking matter like like you can you can still find enough girls that are going to like you like my, my old business partner my original business partner that i started the company with back in, in like 2012 2013 he, he was saying like on the live programs if any girl didn't like you for whatever reason because you were too short too ethnic or whatever the fucking reason was he would say there's there's a hotter cooler girl right on the corner that's going to suck my dick tonight right so yeah and that's true unless you know unless you're in like a ghost town or something like that like where where there's hardly any people but you know if you it's i look at this all mathematically so i like to look at everything very quantitatively yeah you can relate relate to that coming from the software background but if you, if you look at all the the population of girls in your city and you cut out the girls that you know that wouldn't date you because of your height or whatever they're still left with plenty of options Right. Exactly. So a lot of these are just are just very big uh, copes and excuses. So and it comes in all shapes and sizes. Guys are trying to blame their height, their city. There's plenty of guys that blame their city in, in a city that's over like a million people. Like like San San Francisco. I always hear, oh, I'm in San Francisco, so so I can't get girls because it's bad for a game. Or they blame their logistics. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. I live 20, 20, 30 minutes away from the club, so I can't put me 30, 35 minutes away from the club and put like a hundred other guys that are intermediate living on top of the club or next to the club. And I'm going to, I'm going to run circles around them. It doesn't fucking matter. Right. Unless you're, unless you're like over 40 minutes away from the club, that's, then that's like an extreme logistics problem. But you know, I in Vegas, I live 30, 35 minutes away from the club I was pulling like almost every night. You just the banter a little more in the cap. So guys love to just, they, they want to blame some aspect of their personality that, or, or of their physical appearance that they can't control or they want to blame their city or their logistics or whatever, because it allows them to feel better about their lack of results. But it's very rare that I can't, I can't help a guy in an extreme way. Even, even like the wheelchair client, for those of you that follow my channel, it was a wheelchair virgin in London and he pulled two girls during my program. We have it on camera. And I was actually very skeptical before when I took him on as a client, I thought this was going to be a fucking disaster, but he was a cool dude and the girls were actually very receptive. And, they, and when he would open them, they, they would usually think that he needed help and they're not going to tell a dude in a wheelchair to fuck right. off. Exactly. Right. So, and he was yeah. funny too. He would say like, Oh, my shit still works. And like all this stuff. And the girls, yeah. were, and he pulled like a stripper on program. We had gone to a strip club one of the nights and, and we all like went our separate ways and he's texting. He was waiting for the Uber and he pulled a fucking random stripper and got in the, in the cab with her. And he's texting me from her bed. She had to like lift him from the chair into her bed. You know, this, and this is why I love coaching because it's, yeah, you know, all these people bitching. This is a dude that's literally in a fucking wheelchair that has cere cerebral palsy. And you've got able bodied dudes that are, that are saying, like, oh, it's my, it's my height. Uh, tell that to this kid in a wheelchair, you know? So I don't, I don't think that, that they're, everyone's on an equal playing field. That's just right. stupid. I think that. Yeah but maximize your sexual market value 
become the best version of yourself, become the highest value version of yourself, and then, you know, learn strategy and learn tactics. That's going to carry you a lot of the rest of the way. Definitely. Yeah, I agree 100%. There, uh, one, one phrase I like to use a lot, both in game and in business, is uh, if there's one, there's more than one. Right. And that, again, from yeah. a statistical viewpoint, I'm like, uh, a lot of times I'll ask, has, has a girl ever kissed you? You know, um, she, yeah, one girl did. OK, well, there's a thousand more like we just have to go and find them and then and then increase your ability to be able to, uh, you know, to increase the odds there because it's all just a matter of of odds. You, you think about it that way. It's like, yep. you know, even even poker. Right. Like, I mean, again, yep. you can compare it back to to ev right it, it's like uh, you, value, yeah. yeah you could you could win the pot with shitty cards and have no skill like eventually you're going to get dealt to full house i mean it's it's going to yeah. happen you know you but but the better you are then the more that you're going to maximize what you what you've got and yeah. if you get shit hands all the time you can still maximize that to to a large degree so there, yeah there's an important point to, to to piggyback on there too is that like once once they have a result i tell them to like keep that in mind like, like once you bang a seven, once you bang an eight, oh, I can get a girl like this. It's not as scary. It's not a, as big of a deal anymore. But a lot of the guys have that problem, like, you know, starting off because they don't have any of that result to look at. And I tell them, like, you still have to carry yourself like you're the man, like you're at 100 out of 100 value, et cetera. Because if you don't believe in your own product, so to speak, your own value, the girl will never believe it. And I like telling the story of I was running a program where I was on, it was in Vegas. I was at like 250 count or something like that. It wasn't that high yet, but I had a, a client that was a virgin and he said, they respond well to you because you've slept with hundreds of girls and they respond poorly to me because I've been with zero. And I was like, dude, we don't have a posted note on our head with right. our lay count or our results. If you come in like very confident in, in alpha, they're going to respond positively to you. If I come in very weak and unsure of myself, they're going to respond negatively to me. And that kind of set off a light bulb. He got a make out and a pull. And me and my oldest partner, we were joking like he was like the coolest virgin in the club. But it's like this little mental shift that they don't know how many girls you've been with and they don't know like what you bring to the table. And, and one other really quick analogy is if you went into a car dealership and there was like a rusted car with like, you know, the parts broken and windows busted out and the, and the salesman was like, hey, do you want to buy this? You're going to be like, fuck no. Right. But if he's right. like, hey, do you want this like shiny new Lamborghini? You know, obviously price aside, if you're presenting this like nice, high value you know, desirable thing and you believe in your own product, that doesn't mean you'll get every girl, but now you are actually like con contending. Whereas a lot of guys I, I see like one of the biggest mistakes is, that, is they're against themselves and they're stopping themselves and they're handicapping themselves and, and they go in, Oh, no girls like me. Uh, yeah. my hair, my hairline, my age, my height, my ethnicity, et cetera. Uh, I didn't get any girls last month or last year. It's going to be more of the same and all this self-defeating talk and, and uh, lack of belief in themselves is called is perpetuating the problem and reinforcing those and rsd for instance just tells them just keep taking massive action that's just kind of like massive action in the wrong way and with the wrong mindset is going to keep defeating you more and more and you're going to need more help and they're delivering more solutions so yeah. you know I, I try to get guys out of that mental headspace we deal with that right away in the, in the beginning it sounds like that's a lot of the work you do and then from there i just plug them into optimized strategy and it's and it's like a the scale tips and then it's a runaway phenomenon, and, and then they're on the other side where it's they don't have enough time to see all the girls. So, yeah, definitely. It, you know, I think I'd say that because because some of the black pill guys, right? They're 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 right in the sense that one of the things that I think you kind of hit on was that they'll say, "Oh yeah, if you take a guy that has no confidence." And you make him face more rejection. He's not going to get stronger. He's going to reinforce his beliefs that he's a, a loser and that girls yep. reject him. But I don't know how you do it. But when I coach guys, I tell them, I'm like, look, the goal is not for you to get the number or get laid right now. The goal is for you to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation and to stay there. And to because then you win, you win just by doing that. Later on, we can work on other stuff, but I want you to just to to start approaching and seeing that as a win every time because you are in control. That you're not in control whether you get the number, you get rejected or not. That's out, outside of your control. You can influence that, but what you can control is every time you can walk up when you're afraid and do something that scares you and put yourself in an uncomfortable situation and count that as a win because you just did what 99% of guys won't do. And once you start to get that reinforcement, then you're like, you know, and then you you can build on that because then it's true confidence and that true mm -hmm. confidence can get you to the, because no matter how good you are, you know, I mean, even you, I saw in your videos, you're like, you have 13,000 phone numbers, you know, in your phone. Yeah. 
but so it's like a 10 percent and that's like yeah. phenomenal you know to like 10 percent. so i think a lot of guys they have this wrong mindset they're like oh well, if i learn game and stuff then you know it's going to be like 50 <laughs> percent. Yeah. a lot of coaches say you can get any girl once your game's tight enough it's obviously not true yeah it's not true so yeah and, um, yeah yeah to that to that point real quick um yeah, like I, I tell guys to be realistic, so a ten percent close rate. But yeah, I tell them, I tell them the measure of success is implementing correct strategy, because again, same same as in poker, you make the right move. So like, let's say like a real quick poker analogy. For those of you who don't don't know poker, let's say you have like ninety percent odds on a hand, and and you get you get all your chips in for that, and the guy catches his ten percent odds. A lot of people will, will incorrectly think, oh, I wish I could go back in time and play that different, but you want to make that move every time. Right. It doesn't matter that he caught his ten percent odds because you do that ten times, you win nine times. <clears throat> so when you when you consistently make the highest probability moves, that's going to bring you the most success in the long run. So so you shouldn't. It, it's so as long as they're they're making the best probability moves, that's the measure that I look at of of are they are they doing well. So I, I tell them like once you get your skill set honed in and you can move girls from level to level, and it's a funnel. You have your online game, night game, day game funnels down to phone numbers then it's your text messaging funnels down into dates then you, you, your date percentage how many you bring home funnels into your how many you bring home to the house how many you close your closing percentage and then how many you retain i try to get guys to like the 80 90 percent mark so they're bringing home eight or nine girls out of ten from dates closing eight or nine out of ten they bring home retaining eight or nine out of ten and then in terms of getting phone numbers on the dates you can never get that to eight or nine out of ten there's too much shit out of your control and this and that but um, that's what that's what they're striving for. And then it's just a matter of pumping volume into the top and how much free time you can allocate. And that's going to fuel your your results. But but the, the pass through level in the funnel and clearing the bottlenecks in the funnel is the is the important uh, skill to develop. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100 percent. And that's I mean, that's the the key is is looking at the the numbers, right? It's it's the same thing, just like a sales process, just like marketing, right? Yep. You know, when, when I coach guys on business, I say, hey, look, well, you know, let, let's see, you know, because because when you when you try to get someone to buy your product, right, you've got so many people that come to your website and so many people that sign up uh, their email address and then some percentage of that, a couple percent that when you send a, an offer that they they buy it and they get into that funnel. And so it's like, well, if you want to make two thousand dollars a month. Well, we got to figure out your product's two hundred dollars. Okay, you need to sell ten per month. Okay, mm -hmm. well, out of the, if you get a two percent conversion rate on your email list, then you know we can multiply that out, and and that's got to be two thousand people on your email list per per month. And then if you get a two percent conversion rate on your website, then shit, now you got to get you know over what's it, uh, you know anyway, so some around ten thousand people a month visiting your website, and yep. it's the same same exact exact thing. You can break it right down to the science. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just real quick on that. So, so I tell guys like if they're, if they're a lot of guys want to get like one to two closes a week, right. So which, which comes out to 50 to hundred a year. And so I tell them like go for between like 15 and 20 numbers a week. Let's say you get 16 phone numbers consistently a week, you set 25% of them for dates. Now you've got four dates a week, close at least half. Now you're doing two a week and then that comes out to 104 girls a year. So, but you have to, you have to keep those things steady. If you, if you let the funnel dry up and stop putting leads in, it's not magic, right? You can have the best game in the world. And if you only get a couple phone numbers that week, you can't, you know, as it sifts down, maybe you get zero dates, you know, maybe because girls are going to flake, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's volume is, is essential to, to get consistent results, but then the skill. So like the volume is like the size of the funnel at the top. And then the skill is how wide you keep it going down. And most guys have compounding bottlenecks. So it's like, boom, 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 boom. And it's, it, it's, they're up against so much. It's like next to impossible to get any kind of consistent results. Cause they're just, they're failing at so many parts, right? That they get limited phone numbers at the top, they text wrong, right. they maybe get zero dates or one date, they run their date wrong, back to square one. And then they think just doing that like a thousand times is gonna fix the problem rather than addressing all the all the holes and, and bottlenecks in the funnel. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same way I would attack, you know, the business problem is just looking at each each point in the funnel. Like how can we increase the conversion rate from from one step to the next step? And then yep. yeah, yeah, that model that, works for for everything yeah. in life to to pass through for results. Let's so, see. We got a, a couple of questions here, and then yeah, uh, sure. I, I got to jump off. I got to go to a dentist appointment, actually. But uh, let's yeah. see. So, number two pencil one says, John Anthony, I noticed you didn't use attraction, comfort, seduction phrase. I misreaded. Why is that? Um. So I'm a huge mystery fan. He's probably the guy I respect, definitely the guy I respect the most in the game. I think a bunch of his principles, however, are suboptimal and and a little bit outdated, which is no. 
bash on him. I think I think he made the best attempt at a, a system, and I, I carried a bunch of stuff forward, the best parts into my stuff, and I always give him credit when I mention those things on my channel. Um, I think, let's see, so I do I do do that. I just don't call them those things. So so my structure, actually, I'm going to re release a video today or tomorrow on my, my night game structure. So after the open, I try to isolate them within the first couple minutes away from the friends, usually to the bar or some other area of the of the venue. And then that's where I start amping up the physical escalation and the, and the sexualization. And that's where I'm <clears throat> getting into like the comfort part where you're building rapport. But a lot of it's very heavy on the, on the sexualization and framing things for the hookup later. And then <clears throat> I, I disagree that you need like a seven hour rule that you need seven yeah. hours of comfort. Right? He says four to ten with an average of seven. It's not a quantitative amount of hours for comfort. It's a qualitative amount of comfort in order to prevent the buyer's remorse, which is her uh, regretting sleeping with you prematurely and then you know, possibly ghosting or whatever later because she feels like slut shamed. So I have like key things I do to import the requisite amount of qualitative comfort before the hookup and and also right after the hookup. So so you can put them on rotation and so they're not going to feel cheap about a one night stand. It's sort of like kind of anti one night stand framing. I say like, oh, I feel a good connection with you. I feel like we're going to hang out a bunch more. So it still is that structure, but I assume attraction. Right. I'm not doing like. Uh, traditional like qualification stuff I, I took his compliance model which comes from like operant conditioning with like bf skinner where it's you're basically putting them to a series of compliance tests and then there's reward and punishment where you you continue on kind of like jordan belford straight line persuasion system you continue on in the in the straight line when you get compliance if you get non-compliance or objections you deal with those accordingly as it diverges off straight line then come back and go on the straight line again so i assume attraction it's the best mindset the purpose of the interaction isn't to win the girl over it's just to determine her logistics and objections and either take her home right then and there or, or plan a date for later to, to close it then. But you assume attraction, you build rapport through just like flirting and sexualizing. And then, you know, it's, it's all one, one kind of like greased slide, like in sales or marketing or, or pickup, it's all about like just giving them like little baby step compliance things. That's going to allow it to be the most persuasive to, to get like the most yeses, so to speak along the way. A lot of the, the holes and mistakes that guys have in their game is they're like doing it, these big spikes in compliance. Mm -hmm. So so like last minute resistance, for instance, the LMR stuff, a lot of guys encounter that because they're not sexualizing, they're not making out. And, you know, it's, it's a very kind of fact exchange type platonic interaction. And they get back to the house and start trying to put on the moves. Yeah. And it's like this, this like drastic change. And then the girl's like, wait, what is this shit? I thought we were just like hanging out. Or I thought I just came back here for this like, you know, uh, friend, friendly, like the guys are framing the, the to go home wrong, uh, where it's just gonna be like, oh, we're just gonna go. They're trying to like trick them, like, oh, I'm just gonna teach you this or show you this painting or whatever. And they get home and and, and start putting on the moves, and the girl's like, what the fuck is this? So it, I do follow his structure to some degree, but it's more of just centered on compliance and moving things forward. And the length of the interaction is just dependent on how many objections you get along the way. So, yeah, yeah but I, I do respect him a lot and think and think that he did a lot of good. For the, yeah. for the industry. Yeah, I mean, he had it figured out initially, and then, yeah, like like you said, I mean, it, it, it evolved. Like, you, you figure out things that are necessary, things that aren't necessary, ways to shortcut the interaction. Um, let me see. Okay, so Dave Smith says, oh, this is a good one. Talk about SCDs when spinning plates. Uh, X gave me herpes one. It's not serious. 60% have it, but I don't know. It feels like a burden knowing I do. Yes. So STDs are, are pretty severely overrated. I got a vasectomy in 2014, so I don't have, the, have to worry about the pregnancy risk. Um, I, and truthfully, in all my time doing game, all I caught was chlamydia three times, nothing else. And most advanced guys I know caught chlamydia between like two and like five, or I think one of my friends got like seven times, but none of us caught anything else. That doesn't mean that the other things don't exist, but I have a video on STDs on my channel and they're massively blown out of proportion. If you look at the, the pure facts and statistics, um, everything's curable except for AIDS and herpes, right? And AIDS mostly exists, like HIV is mostly exists in like uh, the gay community. And also not, not to say that you can't get it as a heterosexual, but, uh, oh yeah, here we go. This is like the yeah, best it's, that I've found. It's like astronomical odds. If, it's it's like, mostly like it spread through raw and protected anal sex. Yeah. So as or a rule, need, I don't, needles, needles for yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, drug use. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. And, and you can take, I, I, I don't take this, but there's like a preventative thing that you take daily that even if you're banging someone that has HIV, like on a regular basis, it's like almost impossible to catch. Um, but so you can take something like that for prevention. But 
then obviously I never want to catch HIV, but I had a friend that did like a PhD in HIV back like six, seven years ago. And he said that they still live a long, healthy life g given the, the treatment stuff that they have, usually even longer than most regular people. Um, and in herpes, lots of times people have it and, and don't ever show symptoms. Um, I'm looking at these stats here. But yeah, long story, long story is short. One to be careful, <laughs> but it's so rare. <laughs> syphilis is the. Oh the, yeah, but but it's so oh, rare. So. Nietzsche. I'm, I'm a big Frederick <laughs> Nietzsche fan. That's how Nietzsche died. Yeah, that is that is yeah yeah. But yeah, so like you know, I I have clients that are, like are afraid to have vaginal sex because they don't want to get get a girl, you know have a condom break and get a girl pregnant, or, or they won't have any sex because of the STD stuff. I you know with thirteen hundred. 1,319 girls. I've caught chlamydia three times. Neither of the three times were their symptoms. It was just caught with routine testing. It's gone in one week with a pill. It's like, what is it called? Zithromax or some shit. But it's gone. You literally take a pill and it's gone in a week. Like the biggest impact it has is like you have to tell your rotation. And then, you know, I, I would usually just say like, hey, you gave me chlamydia. And, and a bunch of them are only seeing you. So they, they know that you gave it to them. And I, I had a, I don't, I don't hook up with married chicks usually anymore, but I, I had a married chick one time that, that got the chlamydia for me and she just like refused sex from her husband for a week and gave him a pill that she said was like a vitamin supplement or something like that. So he would, <laughs> so he would be cured of it. But yeah. In, in general, they're like vastly overrated. Um, yeah. That doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't be careful. It's, I think it's more of like a personal choice. Um, I think most people should, that are sexually active should have vasectomies. It's like takes 15, 20 minutes. You're awake, local and anesthetic, micro incision, et cetera. And there, there's really no downsides. And you still produce sperm. You still have the same like semen load, so to speak. Your sperm's only 5% of your semen. So unless you're planning on having a kid anytime soon, I think a vasectomy is a, a pretty responsible and, and responsible mo or safe move, um, you know, especially if you're doing any kind of volume. But, you know, you can you can just get – I have my best friend in college. She got a girl pregnant from a one-night stand where she said she was in a, on the pill – came inside, contacted five years later. She had the kid, um, five years back child support. It's like 25% of his income for 21 years. And he's never met the kid, never wants to ra being raised by another person. So it's, it's kind of a smart financial thing. And also you don't want to like fuck up a kid's life and that kind of shit if you're not ready to have family. So. Well, so you got one more question here. Uh, one last question. Before <laughs> How do I find wingmen? I thought I said, what time is your dentist? What? Oh. Um, <laughs> wingmen, uh, you know, the traditional methods of like joining the RSD in our circles and stuff is going to normally connect you with a bunch of weirdos. And that's not to say those people were weird to begin with, but RSD made them weirdos. So a lot of the guys that are in pickup and in the community are not the best wingmen. I, I highly advocate walking up to like an alpha looking dude at the club and just being normal and saying, yep, like, yo, what's up? Like, I, I'm new to the area or I'm looking for people to go out with and hit on chicks. Just like be, be honest. I, I did that in, in Dallas when I first moved there. My friends hadn't moved there yet. And it was this, this big jack dude with tattoos. He turned out to be a manager of Hooters, hooked me up with his whole social circle. I was banging the Hooters chicks through him. And it wasn't weird at all. Like guys, guys think it's weird to like walk up to a dude and just say, Hey, I want to go out and hit on chicks together. Um, and that, that dude had only been with like 50 chicks, which, which he thought was really high. I, he's like, Oh, I've been with a lot of chicks. And he's like, you're not going to believe it. I was like, how many? He's like 50. And I, you know, you can do that in a couple months if you're, if you've got your skills dialed in. Um, but you know, it's that I think that's the best way. It's it's good to have wingmen that are just um, kind of just like cool, basically cool dudes that that are like kind of normal and stuff like that. A lot of the pickup guys can tend to go like fancy, gamey, gimmicky, weird, which is mm -hmm. largely the fault of RSD and and kind of bring things down. But I do think I had a lot of wingmen like that over the years because I we often went out with clients. And I think that can make your game even stronger because not only do you have to convince the girl that you're safe and cool enough but you have to convince that like this guy that's like giving your like serial killer eyes is okay to trust as well yeah so I, I think it, i think it can it can actually sharpen your game up it's kind of like you know it's it's like putting like extra weights on when you're doing like martial arts or something like that but um yeah is there any like last i know you got to go is there any like last minute closing thoughts in terms or, or let me let me just shout out my uh my stuff yeah, real quick yeah let's see that yeah so so my channel is john anthony lifestyle um it's it's largely focused on efficient, effective, optimized, uh, practical, no BS pickup and seduction advice, uh, largely outer game tactics officially. Um, I, I think it's probably the best channel out there in terms of like the most practical advice for, for getting laid. 
Um, <clears throat> and I also run an eight week mentorship program where I work with you very intensively. That's at the platinum dating system.com. You can sign up for a free 30 minute call with me where I, I go over how I can help you. But, um, yeah, in terms of like mindset stuff, I, I think you, you, you have one of the, the top channels for that in terms of breaking guys out of that, you know, the, the, the pussy mode and, and just getting them kind of become more of a man. So that's definitely super important because a, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they want to be kind of theory junkies and, and learn all the theory that they can about how to get the girls. But at the end of the day, like a girl takes one look at them and they're like, eh, you know, it doesn't matter how much theory they know at that point. Exactly. So that's, it's kind of an essential, but don't take that to the extreme. It's okay to jump in and start learning the tactics. I get, I get guys that come to me and they're like, well, I think I'm still a pussy. So I need to like work on that for a long time before I, I tried going on dates and stuff like that. So you can do the same. You can do them both in parallel. Um, and you're not going to just go from pussy to like super alpha overnight anyways. So, yeah. well, one of yeah, the biggest not, things I'll, that'll get you out of being a pussy is going and practicing game, actually going out there and overcoming all those fears. Cause that's like, once you start doing that, then a lot of things in, in life aren't as, as scary. So. Yeah. And it, it, it's fascinating. I'm sure you see lots of times too, like the evolution with a client They it, it, it brings, when you get this, uh, the mindset stuff handled and when you start getting more successful with women, you start to command more respect from your friends. You start to make advances in your job, you know, your family, et, et cetera. You, all this, all the, the confidence and the boundary stuff and all this stuff has, uh, you know, permeating effects throughout your entire life. And so it's, it's like a nice, like cornerstone to, to have success in the, in the rest of your life. Awesome. But, all right, guys. Um, yeah. Definitely check it out. I put a link down below too. I just dropped it in chat for for John's channel. Like I said, he's yeah. the real deal. I mean, he's got got real skill. You know, regardless. You know, I just want to say this as a just a caveat for you guys because I know you guys. A lot of you guys are. You know, I'm obviously friends with Myron and 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 John and and some of the guys in the Red Pill community. And you're like, well, John just roasted them. So how can you have him on your channel? It doesn't matter. I I care about the I don't, I don't get involved in the drama i care about the facts and john is going to teach you a really uh good game and he's got results so you know regardless of what your opinion is you know i i would encourage you to be an objective person who looks at at you know forget about the drama and stuff you know i it's it's also a good marketing pet tactic that john's john's doing on on youtube it, it does you know it, it works but um but uh but what what's important is that I'm telling you, he's got solid game, and so go go check out his channel. So yeah, and I, and and for the record too, like I'm not I'm not just roasting people for the, for the sake of roasting them, right? Like, yeah, it's, I'm trying to provide a lot of evidence behind the different the different claims to kind of open people's eyes because there's really no accountability in this industry in terms of the quality of people's services or, or products, right? People paint paint an image and then live a, a life completely different, right? Or you have internet marketers that know nothing. I, I told my audience the other week that there was a, a multimillionaire in the space teaching uh, dating advice that turned out to be gay, right? Which is nothing against gay people, but he doesn't know the first thing about helping guys get better with girls, right? So, um, oops. yeah, I got to jump on a call as well. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on the channel. I'm going to uh, bring you on mine as well. We can we can continue this discussion, get into more, um, you know, up, upgrading masculinity and stuff like that. But wow. yeah, that, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, collaborating with you more in the future. And I appreciate you looking past the, uh, the other stuff. And none of that was meant to be personal. It's just it's trying to call a spade a spade in terms of certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. No, no I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the channel. Uh, good talk. And uh, yeah, looking forward to being on your channel. All awesome, right, guys, buddy. go subscribe, click the link down below and uh, I'll see you later. All right. Take